O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thought from afar. You scrutinize my path and my laying down and are intimately acquainted with all of my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain to it. Where can I flee from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed and shield, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, and even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand will lay hold of me. If I say, Surely, the darkness will overwhelm me, and the light around me will be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you. We are continuing our study in the faith rest drill. Let's look at a quick outline to see where we've been and to a degree where we're going. Of course, that changes every time I open the word. We switch directions. So we, of course, introduced the study. And we looked at the beginning of the faith rest drill and noted at the beginning with the study that when you start to apply the faith rest drill, this is where the pedal really hits the metal, so to speak, with your spiritual life. This is where your volition really comes into play. This is where you make daily decisions, apart from taking in the Word of God, to learn the Word of God and to apply it. We looked at a number of situations that all believers come into contact, fear, stress, these kind of times where we need to apply certain promises and the promises that you apply. We're now in the process of studying faith mechanics. And we've noted for the new believer, the child believer, you begin the faith rest drill with mixing God's promises with faith. And we looked at Hebrews 1, 1 through 4 as documentation for that. We also studied a number of promises. We are now looking at how the adult believer, the believer who is getting into spiritual maturity, uses the faith rest drill. And we noted how the faith rest drill doesn't remain stagnant or doesn't remain uh, at one level but grows as your spirituality grows. As you mature, the faith rest drill matures along with you and functions to a much fuller extent. Now the point of demarcation between spiritual childhood and spiritual adulthood is when you take these promises and God the Holy Spirit pulls all these doctrines that you've learned, these promises, and makes total doctrinal rationales of them. Not just single promises, but whole paragraphs of doctrines. So we are looking at how the spiritual adult might apply the various rationales that, the, that are delineated in the scripture. We've begun with the essence of God rationale. We're just about to wrap it up. We've talked about these aspects, God's attributes. And of course we did note that we're not looking at these attributes in detail, but we're building categories in our thinking, and we'll fill these categories in as we continue our march through the book of Philippians. We are now talking about God's faithfulness, what God's faithfulness is and how we apply it. And we'll get into his veracity probably today as well. Once we wrap up the essence of God rationale, we're going to look at the plan of God rationale and the a fortiori rationale. And these rationales are really designed to supercharge your spiritual life. Once you know these and have them on board to apply, then you'll find that you will be moving into a, a stage in your spiritual life where certain things in life won't bother you anymore, where you can have your concentration on our Lord and get your eyes off yourself. Of course, that's one of the characteristics of moving from spiritual childhood to spiritual adulthood. Okay, now we have looked at various aspects of how we apply God's faithfulness. We've looked at several categories already. His faithfulness and rebound in logistical support. We'll be looking at the doctrine of logistical support probably in a great deal of detail sometime in the middle of Philippians. It's probably quite a ways away. In testing, this of course is very important because we know that God will not bring you face to face with circumstances for which you are not prepared. God will not test you beyond what you can handle. And what can you handle? You can handle those tests that deal with the doctrines that you have learned. 
this uh, might account for the honeymoon a new believer may have. Let's say you've, you've led a very difficult life. Now you're a brand new believer. And you don't have all the assets that you need to deal with problems that you've previ previously faced. Well, God's only t going to test you and bring you face to face with problems for which you have the doctrine to handle them. You're going to be pulled back and protected a bit more than what you were in this, as an unbeliever. But as you grow, of course, God will test you based on the doctrine that you have had the opportunity to learn. If you sleep through Bible class and, well, and there's an important doctrine taught in the next couple of days, you're tested on that doctrine, but you're sleeping through the class, you're not going to have the assets you need to face that test. So I'd recommend you not sleep during Bible class. Otherwise, you don't have any notes to go through and find out what it is you're being tested on. Sometimes, you know, your mind can flag, and you're writing your notes, you know, what was taught. I found this true many times when I was in Houston. I'd be taking notes copiously, perhaps not concentrating thoroughly on what was being taught, but what I was writing down. And I'd come into a pressure situation a couple of days later, and I thought, I know I've been taught this doctrine. How do I deal with this? Flip, 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 flip. Yep, it was in my notes. So what's the moral of that story? Let's see. Do you listen and not take notes? Taking notes comes in handy, too. I gained a lot from that. So, Anyway, but God's faithful in testing. He's not going to test you beyond what you can handle, what you can handle through the spiritual life. We've talked about how the fact that God protects us from dealings of the angelic conflict that we are not ready for yet. And, of course, this faith rest drill study is an offshoot from the angelic conflict. So we'll be getting more into the angelic conflict once we've wrapped this up. In escrow blessings, as you mature as a believer, God has blessings that he is just waiting to impute to you. But he's fair. It's part of his faithfulness. He's not going to impute to you blessings that you don't have capacity for. As you mature, he's going to be imputing to you these escrow blessings. But his faithfulness lies in that, as well as in the fact that he has these escrow blessings waiting for you. They're in the bank for you, waiting for you. Have your name on them. All you need to do is mature as a believer, and these blessings will be yours. The blessings that you receive in time are simply a down payment of those you will receive in eternity. In suffering, I believe this is where we are picking up our study. And we're looking at 1 Peter 4.19. Therefore, let those also who suffer according to the will of God entrust their souls to a faithful creator in doing what is right. Well, on the surface, I didn't really get a whole lot from this verse. But you look into it a bit more deeply. And let's look at it here more carefully. First of all, that word let is a command. It's a difficult thing to translate from the Greek. But this is a command. If someone says to you, in the scripture of course, let those also who suffer, if you're finding yourself in a situation of suffering, you're being mandated to deal with it in a certain way. This is a mandate. The scripture could very easily say, hey, you folks who are out there suffering, do this. Next phrase, according to the will of God. Now we've noted in the past, not in a great amount of detail, that there are two reasons that, that believers suffer. One is self-induced. The Corinthians, as we noted during our communion service, were suffering because they were out of fellowship. They were, quote, misbehaving, unquote. They were not suffering according to the will of God. They were suffering for discipline. That's one category of suffering believers encounter. However, this, suffering according to the will of God, deals with testing. God puts you into situations into life, brings you face to face with situations where you need to pull out of the reservoir of your thinking doctrines to apply. You may be in a situation where your Bible doctrine notes or tapes or Bible are far away and you have to pull upon the inner resources you have to resolve the suffering. Uh, as an example, I was in the military for a while. I was in the National Guard so I didn't face the months and months that people do who are in active duty do. But in basic training, prior to basic training, I was used to taking in my Bible doctrine tape every day. No problem. And in basic training...